Hi everyone, the time has come to say fair fair to pay the rent to pay our share. Oh, actually no. The time has come to review these headphones. I bought these Bowers and Wilkins PX more than 4 months ago and used them since not being sure what to think about them. And now I finally came with a good analogy for what they are like. And that's a very expensive pair of high heels. Before telling you why I think this, let's get the obvious review stuff out of the way. I choose this amazing color combo with blue and gold and I have to say that these are the best looking headphones on the market right now. You might think differently and it's your right to be wrong. The headphones are well built with premium materials and metal everywhere and this cloth material which Bowers and Wilkins calls a ballistic nylon. This is supposed to be a material very resistant to wear but I managed somehow to scuff it even if I took good care of the headphones and kept them in the provided sleeve when I was not using them. Anyway, nothing that you touch is plastic which leads to a very nice feel. On the right ear cup we have the USB Type-C port which from the competition only the more expensive Bang & Olufsen offer. The port can also be used as an audio input from the PC. Next to it we have the 3.5mm jack to use them with the cable. Then we have the slider for power and pairing which is a bit tricky to activate by the way. Then we have the noise cancelling button which Bowers and Wilkins calls the environment filter button. And then we have the volume up, play pause and volume down buttons and then we have a microphone hole. As you can see nothing is labeled, giving a clean look which I like. The cable is well integrated in the design and it's covered with the same nylon material. The ear cuffs are covered with a leather like material but they don't provide too much padding. And look at this clever design, they are held in place by 4 magnets. The actual audio driver is angled so it will direct the sound better and provide more room for the ear inside the ear cup. The walls of the ear cup are hollow which looks good but decreases the amount of padding and creates a thin and sharp foam wall and this is why I compare them with a pair of high heel shoes. They look well when you look at them, they look well when you wear them, they attract attention from the people around you but at the same time they destroy your body. This combination of a thin foam wall with a relatively hard foam and an unusually high clamping pressure make you feel like your head is trapped in a vice. This is excellent for noise cancelling but horrible for the comfort. The headband doesn't have any much padding either, however it has a very satisfying sliding mechanism with no ratchets involved. It really makes the headphones feel like a high-end product. And of course they come with an app. It's not very imaginatively called headphones but it's quite useful. Besides enabling and disabling the NAC like the small button already does it for you, the app also lets you choose from three modes of noise cancelling, office, city and flight. Not only this but you can also individually modify for each mode the level of voice that you can hear. The app also lets you choose the level of the wear sensor. This allows you to automatically pause the music when the headphones are not on your head. I saw that for me it only works best when it's in the more check mark. I also had a firmware update which made this feature work much better than when I bought them. Before the update was kind of hit or miss. Speaking of noise cancelling, one word can describe it. Amazing. These are the leader now in the market. The clamping force is so great that even the passive noise cancelling is amazing. And once you enable it and put the environment filter in plain mode, the world around you disappears. And they don't even have the cabin pressure like the Bose. I'm completely blown away. And not only they have the best in class noise cancelling, but the sound quality is impressive as well. The sound is balanced and the instruments and vocals are very well separated. The bass is not overpowering, but it's present. I actually prefer this sound signature over all of my other ANC headphones. With the noise cancelling on and the volume at around 90%, the battery life is impressive at around 18 hours. However, these 18 hours were spread over a period of almost 2 weeks since I could not wear them for more than 1 hour at a time. The clamping pressure is so high on such a narrow foam pad. Here you can actually see how my skin is rippling around the ear cup. Most of the times I wear a beanie and then over the beanie I put the headphones. The noise cancelling gets a bit weaker but I can wear the headphones more than one hour at a time. And even if the ear cup got softer after a month or so, I still have the issue with the pressure. Maybe if I had hair and I was not bald, 
I wouldn't feel this pressure since my girlfriend doesn't have this problem with the headphone. And now the summer came and I see myself wearing these headphones less and less. So again, just like the high heels are more appropriate in the summer than in snow, these are more appropriate in the winter than in the summer. In conclusion, these are very good headphones with the best design on the market, as well as the best noise cancelling, the best audio and the best build quality. And this is in the same price range as Bose and Sony, which are made from plastic, and these are mostly metal. So should you buy them? Absolutely. Even more so if you have hair. Maybe these headphones are not made for bald people. What do you think? Do you have these headphones and more importantly, hair? Do you encounter this pressure around the ears that makes you question your existence? Let me know in the comments below. Also, while you are there, why not subscribe as well? By the way, I never wore high heels so don't take as a fact what I said before. Maybe the high heels are just incredibly comfortable and I'm just talking nonsense.